What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today we've got some awesome information for you guys, but before we get into that, please make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe if you're someone new and check out our PlayStation 5 and $1,000 gaming credit giveaway, link in the description below. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the news here. And we're gonna start off with the Nintendo Switch and it seems like this year is even going to be better than last year. Now, Nintendo has their sales results that we're gonna hear about in May, which is great. They sold 20 million plus, whatever the case is, like good stuff there. But it seems like this upcoming year could even be better because many analysts, according to Takahashi Mochizuki, has stated that last year to this year was gonna be the peak year for the Switch, but it seems like things are gonna be tracking even higher. Now, what we do know is that we can compare the sales from Japan from year on year, right? So what's been going on in Japan this year compared to the year prior? And we can also look at the MPD sales as well. And it does seem like it stacks up like this year is going to be an even bigger year for the Nintendo Switch. So on Twitter, Takahashi Mochizuki wrote a new article for Bloomberg, and this is what he had to say. Many analysts at securities firms stated that the Nintendo Switch's peak year was 2020 due in part to COVID-19 demand surge, but Nintendo suppliers, software makers, and retailers say Switch's momentum is set to accelerate even further this year. Now, the forecasted Switch software sales this fiscal year at 20.5 million units would mark the highest for any Nintendo platform as a single year sales, surpassing the current record made by the Wii in 2008. But next year, FY, starting in April, would be even larger than that, suppliers and software publishers say. It would be up to availability of components in terms of supply, but software makers expect demand for the Nintendo Switch hardware will remain strong, and the 100 million unit sales at some point is a done deal. Retailers say the same thing. So essentially what's going on here, guys, is that the Nintendo Switch isn't losing the momentum like we saw with previous Nintendo systems as it gets a little bit older in the life. We saw that even with the Nintendo Wii. Things Things are just getting better and better. So despite the Nintendo Switch aging, when it comes to the actual hardware and the power of the system, people still want to play this. Now, that was one thing that we saw quite a bit. Oh, Animal Crossing only sold well because of COVID. Switch only sold so well because of COVID and because of this and that. But COVID is still kind of around, but the restrictions have kind of lifted in lots of places and people are able to kind of go out and kind of do things. Not complete capacity around the whole world like before, but it's still a bit better with the vaccinations and stuff going around now and also just restrictions being lifted. So the fact that the Nintendo Switch is still performing at a very high level at this point kind of shows that, well, yeah, maybe it was a little bit because of that, but the momentum was gonna be there no matter what. The positive acceleration of the Nintendo Switch because of the software is driving the sale and the software is continuing to roll out. We saw what happened in February with Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. We saw Persona 5 Strikers and also Bravely Default. That kind of lifted the Nintendo Switch to some really good sales for February, the most that they've had in like over a decade when it comes to sales since like the Wii. So it's pretty crazy to see that. Plus, the momentum also brought Nintendo to have the highest dollar amount ever, passing up the Nintendo DS when it comes to US MPD sales with the Switch. So they're doing some pretty big things here. So right when you thought that, okay, the momentum's kind of done, PlayStation. 5 and Xbox series of consoles they're gonna come in and kind of steal the thunder that Nintendo has and people are just gonna shift over no that is not the case at all which I didn't think it would be which is the reason why I made a few videos last year talking about how Nintendo isn't really too worried about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series of systems and this was the reason why I made those videos is because like look this is a whole separate thing, right? At this point, this is a hybrid. You can play it anywhere that you want. You've got different types of softwares and you've got exclusives. Exclusives are the big thing. We're looking at Super Mario, looking at Bravely Default, Super Smash Brothers, Animal Crossing, all these type of unique games that you can only get on the Nintendo Switch. So that's the reason why the system is doing so well because it's unique and it sets itself apart. And also it has the software to back it up. It doesn't need to be the most powerful or the strongest or the fastest or whatever the case is. All it needs is to have some good software, a good price that people think is affordable and for the most part just continue coming out with great games every single month so i think that that's the case here and that's why we're seeing the acceleration of the system and 100 million in this year yeah we talked about that already it could even be higher than that it could be the best selling system of all time based on how things kind of go because nintendo still has 
a lot of software left. I mean, this isn't just the last year and that's it and there's gonna be like the next generation. No, there's still Splatoon 3, there's still Bayonetta, there's still Metroid, there's still Project Triangle Strategy, there's still Zelda. I mean, there's still a lot of games that are coming up for the system, man. So I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting year this year. But what are you guys' thoughts on the acceleration of the Nintendo Switch even as we get past year four and head into the year five mark? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here, guys. We're gonna check out the Amazon bestsellers for new releases, physical games. This is always very interesting to look at because you kind of see the shift and what was going on. Now, I've been looking at the Amazon sales charts for at least five to six years here, but more intensely, more like it within the past three or four years. And what I've seen so far is that the shift to digital is absolutely real for Microsoft and for Sony, and especially for Microsoft. The shift over to there is the real deal, and it does seem like the last bastion of physical games media will be the Nintendo platform going forward in the future, because I'm looking at the Amazon bestsellers, and they kind of categorize it in two different things. They have new releases, which whatever game has came out within the last like month or so, or at least a few weeks, they'll have there. Then they also have the best sellers. Now in the best sellers list, you're gonna see a variety of different gaming products from like digital coin codes and Roblox and all sorts of stuff, controllers, all sorts of things that people buy when it comes to the gaming sector. But in the new releases, it'll usually pinpoint the games that are coming out in the future, so pre-orders, and it'll also pinpoint games that have recently released. Now, if you look at the new releases, we can go down the list here, and it's pretty much dominated by the Nintendo Switch. And if you're looking it through here, we've got one through 10. I can just read them off for you guys here. Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury number one. Monster Hunter Rise is continued to gain crazy amounts of momentum, especially after that demo came out. I think people rushed out there and bought the physical edition, so that's number two. Number three is New Pokemon Snap, a game that's coming out next month in April at the very end of the month, so that's number three. Number four is Hades, a game that's already available on the Nintendo Switch, but you have the physical edition of the game. Not a bad price either, $34.99. And then the next game up is the Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town, the premium edition. That actually sold extremely well in Japan, over 200,000 units in the past week. So it looks like it's going to kind of carry that momentum over here to the West. And then we have another game here, and that's Crash 4 It's About Time. Now, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series versions of this game also launched at the very same time, but you obviously have the people that are doing the free upgrade, you have people that are buying digitally and kind of getting the benefits there. So really, the only place where we saw Crash Bandicoot with physical sales in the recent re-release of this game was the Nintendo Switch, which brought up this whole discussion to me at least, like, hey, physical games, man, for Xbox and for PlayStation, I think they're pretty much going to be done after this generation. I don't think we are going to see physical games on the next Xbox and PlayStation system because you're not really seeing anything in these Amazon sales charts. And Amazon, since because of the pandemic and because of just basically where people live and stuff like that, Amazon has become one of the largest retailers for gaming, period. Like people just buy so much stuff on Amazon because it just gets sent straight to your house. They're building more distribution centers. They can get stuff out to people quicker, especially here in the US. I mean, and even if you go down the list, Bravely Default 2 is still there, which is why I wasn't worried about Bravely Default when it comes to the MPD sales. That's right there within the top 10. Also, Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, Complete Edition on the Nintendo Switch, Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town on the Nintendo Switch, and then you've got Switch systems and digital codes and stuff like that. So, Switch is just kind of dominating the physical sales, and I also think it's because people just can't get a hold of Xboxes and Playstations at this point. They're still just supply strength because of the chips and because of everything that's going on but I think that even when you could or even when you can I think that people are going to opt to buy digitally on Microsoft and Sony system which we saw that shift we already saw it beforehand because the switch has pretty much been dominating the Amazon sales even back when the PlayStation 4 and also the Xbox one was selling the physical games and it was a little bit more balanced but it's still to the point to where the Nintendo Switch is just doing so much better on there. So I personally think, I mean, I think it was already a done deal, but I think that 
seeing these charts and kind of seeing what's going on with physical gaming on these systems especially with game pass just ramping up and the bethesda deal and everything game pass you know you just get it for the subscription service i think it's pretty much over when it comes to large scale physical media in terms of consumption on the xbox platform for sure now on playstation i do think that's a little bit better with the physical and everything like that i do feel that there's more people buying it but what we saw in the mpd sales is that people are still buying spider-man miles morales on playstation 4 they're buying it on ps5 it's one of the best selling games for the mpd but it's not showing up in any physical retailer's charts in terms of things. It's not showing up on Amazon like we saw a few of these games that we went over, like Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. We saw that. Um, I know Persona 5 Strikers was a little bit lower down on this list. Uh, we saw that. But, I mean, the fact that we don't see Spider-Man just shows that people are just buying it digital. So, I think that after this generation, it's pretty much done for physical games on PlayStation and also on Xbox. And they're just going to roll with that all digital and it's just going to be interesting to see how things are moving forward with that now i do think that nintendo is going to keep it going i think that the ratio in terms of what people buy definitely physical is a thing more on nintendo platforms maybe just because people like to collect physical maybe it's because of the cartridges i'm not really sure what it is but i still think that nintendo is going to advance the tech some people have talked about nintendo maybe dropping you know physical media for some reason because of cartridge costs but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're going to more like perfect it or more like invest into it to where they can get higher speeds. They can also get more space for a better price. I think that's probably one of the biggest concerns for Nintendo and one of the biggest priorities is getting that cartridge space up getting the speeds faster and making it cheaper for developers to get their games in terms of size on the cartridges for the next gen or just going forward so we'll see how it all works out there but for me i'm obviously a physical type of person i like the ownership of the games and everything but i guess it's all based on what people think i think there's some games that are great digital stuff like super smash brothers animal crossing games like that that you're always going to pick up and play you know all the time i think those are pretty cool but i still like to have the option for physical games when I can get them. Like having the option taken away is something that I'm not really into, but some people don't care. But what are your thoughts on this when it comes to this digital versus physical and basically the wiping out of it, man? Because it seems that way to me on PlayStation and Xbox. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the last topic here, we have a sales update on 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. So total shipments and digital sales for the game have surpassed 400,000 units worldwide as of March 12th publisher atlas and developer vanillaware have announced now 13 sentinels aegis rim launched for the playstation 4 in november 2019 in japan and in september 2020 worldwide the game was also announced as a jury selection title in the entertainment division for the 24th japan media arts festival so very good there and it's interesting to see this game kind of slowly creep up in sales I think 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is a fantastic game and while it's more niche at this point I think that it's selling better is actually a good thing for the possibility of it actually coming to more players. I think that it was a small budget type of game they wanted to focus on a singular platform with the PlayStation 4 that had the most units out when they were planning this game and everything and I think that if you look at it 400,000 units not bad at all now a lot of those were discounted because of the 29.99 deal that we saw here in the west very shortly after it launched not too long after i think it was like yeah it was 29.99 i bought it on like black friday and i still haven't played it yet at this point but i do want to see it come over to other platforms the way that it seems it seems like a game that'd be perfect kind of like a portable type of play because it's very story based very nice looking art is great in there and everything but it seems like a type of game that i would love to play just kind of portably before bed or something like that just lying down and kind of enjoying absorbing the story so i just bought it just to support it and hopefully that can give them some funds and some resources to get the game out on pc or xbox and nintendo as well but either way they're kind of doing pretty good for how it is not at this point although this is a marketing ploy to consistently announce the sales like every single few months hey we sold 200,000 we sold 300,000 we sold 350,000 I mean it's just something that some developers employ in order to kind of keep them in the news cycle like what we're seeing right now right and then it kind of entices more people to say okay well hold up I haven't forget about this game let me go check it out but hey I think that this is a solid game I think it was one of the best games released 
last year and it definitely deserves that attention in the news cycles and everything. So what are your thoughts on all the different topics that we discussed here today? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Check out the links in the description. We've got Twitter. Go to give us a follow on there. Stay up to date on all latest gaming news and information. Also, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you can. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you for the next one. Peace.